keeps you up at night just to dash? I mean, what, what are you worried about before you even get going here talk about what's going on now? Well, what keeps us up is uh, some imbalance in a negative way. So for me, supply of capital, supply of new real estate are things that can disrupt uh, you know, the, the, the normal cycle of things. I, I would say right now we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, there is capital coming back into our industry. Uh, people compare it to 09 when there was literally no capital, but right now I'd say the market's fairly well balanced between opportunity and those people willing to compete for it. Uh, with respect to new supply in, in most commercial real estate markets, uh, it's anywhere from de minimis to non-existent. Obviously New York and places like London are, are exceptions to that rule. So when there's a flood of capital or a flood of new new supply of real estate, I think the market tends to uh, to lose its footing at some level. And and for for my business as a lender, we don't really play for upside. We're in it for a defined return. Uh, so if things get uh, a little bit too ahead of themselves, you can wind up taking uh, what I would generally say is asymmetric risk. You're you're getting a finite return, and there is downside. They have to be concerned about. So the lending side, we, we, we are tuned to where the market cycle will take us. Paul, you still have a global perspective? Sure. For me, the you know, thing about what keeps me up at night depends which hat I have on. You, know, you have to look at it as an acquirer or as an existing owner of a very large <coughs> global portfolio, and clearly two different things. On the acquiring side, what really keeps me up at night, what I really focus on is how we can you know maintain our competitive advantage in buying properties especially in you know, the large supply constrained markets, as we're really seeing, I think, you know, might call that a balance of capital. I actually think we're seeing in some of the major markets, especially in New York and in London, an imbalance you know, where there's so much capital flowing into these markets, it's really starting to drive pricing to a level where it, it's very difficult to be competitive in acquiring new product. And that clearly uh, keeps me up at night because we want to be able to buy and grow our business in these markets it becomes challenging, especially as we start to see a lot of the global pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, outgrow their own borders, which has you know, become a constant theme. They can't find opportunities in their market. And every one of the, the large sovereign wealth funds you speak to, the first thing they say, they want to buy <coughs> their business outside of their local market, and they want to buy in New York, and they want to buy in London. And clearly, after New York and London, it's the other big supply constraint markets. So very challenging, and every morning I wake up trying to figure out uh, how we're going to be competitive with all this capital. Is it, is it, doesn't FI, FIREA play in your, uh, your favor? Because these sovereign wealth funds can only put out 49% of the ownership structure. They're going to need an operating partner. They're going to need a co-investor. Isn't that capital coming here an opportunity for you? There's a, a number of you know, the sovereign wealth funds that will invest in, uh, as Rob was referring to, a structure where it allows them to be passive U.S. taxes, but there are still a number of investors that are willing to that acquire assets where it's not tax efficient. They'll buy 100% and they don't have co investors or low operating loans. And we just saw that you know, in, uh, in New York with one Chase Manhattan Plaza. That's not an 892 investor. They came in, they're you know, first investment in the U.S., and they're taking out an investment on their balance sheet. So they don't think they're ever going to sell. So they're So well, that's, 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 that's what, how large and who did that and what's the scale of the investment just in case people didn't see the paper? Sure. Well, I think you know, from a, an investment standpoint, it was a, a Chinese company that came in and is buying you know, one Chase Manhattan Plaza. It's a $725 million deal, which is a you know, large transaction for an offshore company making their first investment in the U.S. <coughs> Richard. 